Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 1v1 for you today on Villa Fiore between some extremely high level players. Starting off as the Axis, we have Bunker Buster from South Korea, ranked number 12 with the Wehrmacht using the Luftwaffe Battle Group. And then as the Allies, we have Pie Eater from New Zealand, ranked number 26 with the Brits, using their Heavy Armor Battle Group. Co-casting this one with me is my buddy Fred, fresh off of his European holiday and diving back into the Company of Heroes competitive scene. And while play in this game starts out respectful, the gloves eventually come off and both players look for the final strike that will knock their opponent out of the game. This one was a blast to cast. I hope you all enjoy. And with that, we'll get to the video. So, obviously, we got Pie Eater, the Brits, here in blue, kind of at the bottom of the screen. It's uh, east side of the map. I don't know why north is literally never facing up in the default view. Relic, please fix. Um, and then we got Bunker Buster in red. Uh, the top of the map, west side here with the Wehrmacht, going double Pyo into Grenadiers. So, again, something that we've seen more often. Um, and so, Fred, I know you just got back from a, a nice vacation, and then you yeah. immediately dove into playing a bunch of, uh, of games. So what have you noticed coming back uh, to Onyx Shark? Well... I have to be way quicker than I was. I had to be before, <laughs> for uh, even at my level of play. So the early the early matchup just go way quicker. Yeah. So where you had a few, maybe a few seconds before, you have like a second now, especially between the just your basic units like the riflemen and the grenadiers. Yeah. It, it all goes way quicker. Cover is like way more important. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, if you wait. A little bit too long to retreat units you get punished now especially like the squishier units like scouts and uh engineers will get gunned down on retreat in ways that they didn't before which makes sense yeah, even, right it's a big uh accuracy buff so units are less likely to miss uh retreating units what are you saying yeah even with the the like they buffed the scouts help like i mean it was like five yeah five is it, more help it's enough unit? for like one additional shot which is kind of nice yeah, but it still is really quick if you if you get caught up in close range with grenadiers or something. It just goes really fast. Yeah. So we're seeing kind of interesting strategies, both uh, double engineer, double mainline uh, for both sides. Pi Eater is locked in the heavy armor battle group. And both sides playing kind of very respectfully kind of in the beginning. Um, so no one's really done anything super wonky or aggressive yet. Sappers find pioneers in the open. Uh, right as infantry run into Grenadiers. And here are the Sappers. It looks like they're going to continue to cap. Infantry, the infantry section here backs up uh, and is waiting uh, for the second section to show up. Uh, Bunker Buster getting a sniper out, which this is something that uh, Orange Pest talked about in our cast uh, previously about how effective the sniper is at countering the Brits uh, in the new meta. So interesting to see. I know Bunker Buster's uh, got pretty solid micro. We'll see how he does. Sappers in the south, yeah, forced away by the Grens. Maybe pre-patch that would engagement would have worked, but now not anymore. Yeah, pretty interesting to see like the map changes on this map. I don't know if you talked about it before, but like they changed the uh, around the the hatch row, mm -hmm. or they changed the the harder cover for like light uh, fences. Yeah, I don't know if it's still like green cover or like uh, orange cover or like yellow cover. It's but. it's yellow. So that thank you for pointing that out because I had missed that. But that's why that infantry section up against the grenadiers, the grens were in green cover. The section was in yellow uh, because that iron wrought fence is designed to not block vehicles. If I remember correctly from the relic yeah. on a live stream, like light vehicles. Yeah. Like light vehicles, like the heavier ones go through it. But like light vehicle play in the center was really hard with like. I think Greyhounds and things like that, or maybe lighter. Yeah. So third infantry section comes up. One is uh, upgraded with the Recce package. And the three infantry sections plus sappers will do fine against the Grenadier, but the sniper is going to start bleeding some models here. Yeah, pretty interesting with like the new TTK. Even like your micro for snipers needs to be more on point as well, because like the accuracy bonus just hits the sniper uh, way more as well. So goes yeah. down quicker now fortunately with the uh, sight blocker here that sniper's going to get away on retreat without taking any damage 
Bunker Buster capping up the uh, south side of the map here with Pioneers. Uh, and then you got Pie Eater counter capping uh, with Sappers. We're going to see another Gren Squad out for Bunker Buster. And it's got to be to shield his sniper uh, potentially from light vehicle play like the Humber or the Dingo. So far, Pretty interesting to yeah. see like both both players keeping their mainline infantry pretty close. Yeah, and and both players again being very respectful and then also trying to only take engagements that they know they can win, right? So you see, yeah, these Grand Scots grouped up. And a lot of like soft retreating away from unforgiving engagements. There we go. Sniper chips away at the sappers. The sappers on the flank here, these Grens. Yeah, even in heavy cover here, these Grens are going to get whittled down. Oh, the sniper forced to retreat by the, the flank of the infantry section. And it's actually going to kind of like soft retreat out to the side here, using the pioneers as cover. Infantry section trying to cut it off. Here are Grens as well to support. Yeah, here the only good choice is to walk away, I guess. Yeah, and now like, a Humber out. Oh, every time, every oh. shitting and he's going to get in the garrison. It's I actually like this. That should keep him from getting whittled down too fast. Oh, oh no. We can't the Grenadiers in the perfect spot to cover. The sniper will get away from the Grenadiers, but now infantry section pushing, and this Grenadier squad may die to the Humber. Ooh. The infantry section yep. just survived as well. Yeah. Really oh, close. One Gren squad goes down. Humber, thanks to the uh, the Panzerfaust, Humber unable to chase into the base. Humber's going to relocate to allow the sappers to repair it. And then the rest of the infantry just kind of forced to back off and lick their wounds here. Ooh. I, th I thought uh, the Grand Squad could, the six Grand Squad could have stayed in there a little more for maybe to get a squad wipe on the recce package. Yeah. Was there an lucky engagement for uh, for Pi not losing the not losing the infantry section but getting the Grand Squad with the Humber? Yeah, you, you know he would have liked to get the sniper, but he'll take the the Grand Squad for sure. That's a lot of utility that's no longer on the field. So Bunker, uh, Panzer Grenadier Headquarters, Pack 40 out now. Meanwhile, for Pie Eater, he's got a six-pounder on the way. So he's anticipating some sort of light vehicles. So we haven't seen uh, any battle group selection for Bunker Buster yet. So uh, eight rod spam, not imminent. And so Pie Eater, he picked heavy armor, but he hasn't selected any of the battle group abilities. And he's actually upgrading his infantry. He's got Bren on this infantry section, which makes sense. They should be able to whittle down uh, the sniper at range just a little bit better with that. An another Grenadier squad coming out for Bunker Buster. Interesting. The Humber nice is positioning with the Humber, yeah. Yeah. Wanted to say that. <laughs> well, and he's just and covering that uh, muni point there. The Humber plus the Sappers, he has pretty good map control. Uh, capping deep into territory that you'd consider, you know, to kind of be uh, Bunker Buster's purview. Now, a lot of mines going down here on the opposite side of the map. Um, and so yeah, that. I, I count three, like two on the. On the two on the fuel and like one down south with the. Yeah. Now, Flare from this infantry section. Uh, will probably allow them to spot these mines here. One of the sappers has a sweeper upgraded. So uh, they've got to be on the lookout at this point for mines. It, and you kind of see it in the Humber not being hyper aggressive. Yeah, there's another mine down at the uh, southern VP as well. He has a sweeper indeed, but I don't think he has it equipped, right? Uh, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have it out right now. Yeah. Yeah. You probably forgot to toggle it back on. Which can be really frustrating. It's a cool ability, right, that you can put it away. 
Oh, it's gonna be frustrating if he hits one of those mines with the Humber later. Oh, yeah. Pack 40 will force the Humber back. Sniper whittles away the infantry section, so the Grens will hold on to this field point. Ooh, interesting mm -hmm. flank going for the sniper. Oh, I like this. Good call. Does he see it? Enemy now he does. Now because they stepped oh, into the, uh, the victory point there. A second pack 40 out for Bunker Buster. See, he is concerned oh, about these numbers. Yeah, he goes down, but <laughs> getting yeah. close to the mine. Yeah, there's one. Uh, ooh, that does a lot of damage. But no one's in position to follow up. All right, and the deep infantry section flank, they're forced to retreat. And they're still hunting the sniper. Yeah, the Bren section is on the opposite side now. <laughs> <laughs> you still this is kind of funny. hunting that sniper. This sniper is going to qualify for the Olympics here with all this running he's doing. <laughs> Definitely. A double pack already. Yeah. That leads me to believe we're probably going to see the eight rods. Oh, the mine. The infantry section down to one model. <laughs> it's this sniper driving me crazy. But the sniper hasn't had that big of an impact because of how well Pie Eater has actually countered it. You know, he spent a lot of his time kind of dodging and ducking. Yeah, chasing it, so. Yeah. He has to move it around all the time. Yeah. More mines going down. And I, I really like this from Bunker Buster. And he's going for tier four. Uh, Panzer Company getting built now. So it looks like we're only going to see pack 40s. Um, I mean, I like this. You got the Grens to merge uh, and with the utility. And then maybe if you need it, you get the Stoss Trooping out at the end of the game. Yeah, you can merge the Grens into the Stoss Trooper to keep them alive more. Yeah, it looks like Pie Eater uh, withdrew one of his Humbers. Yeah, he smart. just did. And he's also going for his tier 4 right now. So I think... I don't know if he... Go for it. Sorry. I don't know. I think he merged the, the low HP one or merged uh, redrew it. Yeah, I think so. Rather than try to waste time repairing it. Yeah, I think so. Is it especially, I don't know if he saw both of the pack 40s. They're actually kind of weird. They're like sitting in the back with the sniper. But a double pack 40 is instant death for a Humber. And so I wonder if he just realized like, hey, this is not uh, a viable strategy anymore. So... Maybe keep one around an anti-sniper roll, but otherwise wants that fuel back. Yeah, yeah, especially with mines do these mines doing mm -hmm. like 200 damage on the 250, 40, uh, yeah, health model. Oh my goodness! Grenadiers get burned down by this infantry platoon over here. Although they're taking a lot of damage and not dropping a lot of models, which is super frustrating. Pie Eater still looking for this sniper who's sitting in the rear where he's protected by an MG bunker. <laughs> Look at this infantry section bluff. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, he's still, he's still not getting the... still not having the, the, the mine sweeper out. out. Yeah. yeah, so he's hitting the mines. Pie Eater floating a ton of manpower. I'm gonna laugh if Bunker takes a shot and then backs up with this sniper. Just harassing Pie Eater with it. There it is. There's the shot. Yeah, he's in a good position now to take some pop shots. Well, still covered. But man, in the meantime, Pie Eater has got great map control. He's basically run all the way up the middle. He's going to bleed a fair amount here now as they collapse his pocket. But from a resource and a victory point uh, control perspective, he's doing great. He's oh. gonna lose one model, I guess, yeah, if the sniper yeah. kills one. Uh, oh. Snipe just out of range. Yep. And vision. Gren's focusing fire, but they're not gonna finish it. Now Bren squad approaching. <laughs> the sniper's backing up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, there it is. Ooh. Oh, so close. Just one quick barrage. That's so much damage already. Wow. And Pie Eater Look at that annoying positioning on the on the bunker there. On the, it's just the retreat path is anno is kind of risky though. But yeah. Ah, so Bunker Buster took the Luftwaffe battle group with the light the light AT drop. Um, I think he just wanted the infantry reserves as fast as possible. Yeah, I think so as well. And he's getting uh, looks like a Brumbear. 
I think so, sorry. Pie Eater getting a Matilda and then Foot Guards. Both players floating a ton of manpower. Here's yeah. this. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was, I wanted to talk about like the double AT gun. I think he used it for like the, I mean for the humbush, but like they're sitting in base doing nothing. It's so much wasted resources at the moment because there's no enemy vehicles on the field. Yeah. Now is the Matilda go coming, so. Uh, the and the Pack 40 should do fairly well against the Matilda, but the Matilda has really high frontal armor, so it'll still occasionally bounce at Pack 40. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of resources which were on the field and do oh <laughs> the wipe oh damn immediate Look at the, those models were so clustered on one place yeah rest in wow. peace grenadiers oh dirt back coming out yeah the sappers got their minesweeper out after they lost two models <laughs> now matilda it also probably will struggle to penetrate the frontal armor of the Brum Bear. Uh, they're finally finding some mines over here. Yeah. I really like the, the, the disabled above it. It's a really good uh, quality of life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it makes it super helpful just to see. Here we go. Ooh, the damage. Yep. But just damage, no model drops. Here's the Matilda. Pack 40 set up. First two shots bounce on the Brum Bear. And then first two pack 40 shots also bounce on the Matilda. There we go. There's a penetration from the six pounder. And now Pyatt are teching grenades. Try to help with snares. He's got four infantry sections out. And then he also has these foot guards. Uh, who at full strength are going to do really, really well against these grenadiers. Here comes a grenade. Bunker Buster didn't see it until the last second. Oh, and he loses that Gren squad as well. Yeah. Well, good pickup for Pie Eater. I think he should have maybe gone for like the infantry training, the bunker buster, like the infantry officer squadron's upgrade, because yeah. he had a lot of Gren squads. He did. And he was like floating resources. He he hasn't. He has only the only tech he did is the medical station. Uh, and his answer is, as we suspected, is going to be the Stoss Troopin. Yeah. But they are With no grand squads to re <laughs> like one grand squad left to reinforce them. Yeah, he's gonna have to keep them together for yeah. the healing among other things. Oh, pack forty. Second one rolling up. Yeah, the third one as well. There's the pack wall. Yeah, it pops the smoke. And the pack forties think about the attack round. Oh, the Brum Bear gets a nice hit with the attack round. Gren's following closely, looking for the Faust. Oh, that penetrated that shot, right? Um, yeah, it looks like it did. Because they nerfed the damage on the... If it, the they nerfed the, like, the, the, the all-around damage. I thought that was on the... I thought that was just on the Stug. I, I forget. I thought on, uh, on like, all, all those uh, vehicles, like the Bulldozer... Oh, the to a quarter damage instead of 50%. Like, oh! <laughs> Yeah, but oh, if it penetrates, man. it does full damage, so. Yeah. Sapper's gonna repair this uh, this Matilda in the rear here. <laughs> the mines are still not cleared. Uh, and that could, that could turn this game, you know. Uh, a well-placed mine blunts in advance and it gives you an opportunity to get a nice trade onto, a, uh, onto an enemy vehicle. Uh, we've yeah, seen crazier some... things. Yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of a lot of good like opposite map play to like counter the broom bar. I guess like the low movement speed of the broom bar, just capping the upside of the map all the time. Uh, now three pack forties for Bunker Buster, and he's still floating a ton of manpower. <laughs> he should probably upgrade something. Maybe like his tier three, so that his like AT guns get like fat one. Or maybe another like AT gun. A, another squad of Stoss troopin to counter these infantry sections. Although they had the yeah. potential to bleed quite a bit to the Matilda. Oh, <laughs> we hit the mine again. <laughs> infantry section clumped up. Now here comes infantry blob. I, I oh, wonder if flank. they still yeah. trying to get the sniper. Oh. So strafing run comes in. Hits one of the infantry sections. Oh, nice. Oh. oh, what? There was a double nade, right? Why didn't that snare? Like the oh, single nade, single nade. 
Oh, it was the single? I thought it yeah. was two. Maybe oh. one was not... Uh... Infantry section goes down. Well, Matilda has to watch out. Yeah, foot guards take a ton of damage. Matilda backs up into smoke. The triple pack 40 is doing a lot of damage. Oh, there's the other snare under the brum bear. Yeah, but the pack, the the the, quad, the six pounder is not doing anything. Yeah, but with that much damage, it is going to take a while to get that back out on the field. Now a yeah. P4 coming out to support it. And then we also did hear a sapper squad go down uh, at one point during that engagement. I like that the uh, the early game passivity has turned into some uh, mid game aggression here. Um, and you can tell Pyeter has been frustrated by this sniper and that he's throwing these the deep enemy. flanks uh, and hooks trying to catch it out of position, but Bunker Buster is just all over it. Second Matilda coming out now. And I think they run the risk of being made obsolete uh, by the P4 even. Yeah, and the pack wall. It's just a lot. I don't know. Like three packs. Mm -hmm. I still think you should have like you should go for the upgrade. I mean, if you get like veterancy one on these triple packs, and you can have like the camouflage and ambush like a tank with three shots. Oh man. Yeah, but he's probably gonna go uh, for the black prince. You think, Pioneer? With too many two Matildas on the field, I don't see the value in. Uh, oh man, that Pioneer! Oh, finally gunned down by the foot guards. I, d I don't nice. see the value in the you know run of the mill Churchills uh, when you already have a couple of Matildas on the field. No, I don't think so as well. Here we but go. It, it's like I mean yes, like three or four more to go, like victory po uh, like points, command points for the. Yeah, it's not going to be anytime soon, and he also needs yeah. the fuel. Another Grenadier squad for Bunker Buster. Interesting. He's got he's got some other options. Oh. Wow, Matilda taking some damage with the single six pounder. The Brum Bear's got more than enough power to just plow right through that. And Pyeter now with the triple cap on. And I feel like the army composition favors Bunker Buster, but the map control is very much in the favor of uh, Pyeter here. Yeah, it's probably because he lost so many Grand Squads. Now even to have, have to rebuild like one Grand Squad. Because I mean, he lost three already. Yeah. yeah the, fat ball. the sniper whittling away at the six pounder as the Grens move up tactically. AT guns in the rear providing support. Matilda's 24 kills. <laughs> What's sniper. that? 24 kills for the sniper. He's doing really well. Yeah, that's that's right on par. Oh, here comes artillery barrage. In the Ooh, rear. Is he gonna survive with oh, the sniper? No. Oh no! Oh! Two, two packs decrewed. Sniper takes a ton of damage. Here come the foot guards right on the flank. And they get him. Oh, this was a really nice. Oh, that rec recce artillery. And just as oh, if he can destroy this, these spec 40s, that's so much value. Oh my gosh. The Bunker Buster already building another one. Oh, uh, now here comes the uh, Luftwaffe loiter to counter. A fair amount of damage in the first pass to the Matildas and to the Sappers. But can he get the P4? Oh, oh there goes. 600 knocks out nice. the P4. I and mean, this can be like, uh, like, this can be his uh, way back in the game, right? Yeah. He was not out of it, but like, it felt like Bunker Buster had like more mass of an army, but he just killed so much here. Yeah, that engagement was huge for Pie Eater, and getting away with both Matildas. Granted, he's lost a couple infantry sections now. He's lost a sapper. But now that he's outside of that Stuka loiter, uh, he has, I'd say, the upper hand in army composition. And he's definitely in a comfortable spot from a VP perspective. More foot guards on the way, and they've been worth their weight in gold so far against, especially against the squishier axis symmetry. Oh, and the Stas trooping went down at some point. 
so we missed that think, as well. Yeah. yeah. I think it was in disengagement as well. Let me check some dead models. Maybe I can find them. That's, <laughs> that's a huge <laughs> pickup. Commander, we have artillery on standby. I see a dead infantry section over here. Yeah. Our vehicles are Could be in the middle, right? Training. I think so. All right, now Bunker Buster working his way back out, leading with the Brum Bear. And he's got his pack wall in the rear. He's back up to three, the pack 40s. Uh, Gren's with a Bren, fighting his infantry section with Reki. Oh, man. Reki artillery coming in again. Oh, man. And these packs are in a bad spot. Oh, the shot. Yeah. It's just so much lurk. The building is like, oh, man. The building the absorbed building a couple of those rounds, yeah. Yeah. All right, they're Let's outside the, the circle. They need to set up. Yeah. Here come the foot guards to challenge. Oh, one Matilda force to back all the way up. Foot guards throw the uh, gammon bomb to force the pack 40s back some more. And those foot guards are actually at risk. If the Rum Bear gets a good shot off, they're on retreat now. Yeah, one pack 40 is decruited. Yeah. By the Reki. The Rum Bear is still hitting very, very hard. But he's got. Oh, because he, he's building another P4. I was going to say, I thought he would have more fuel than that. Command points should be allotted. Command Feels like he's just losing too much infantry, Bunker Buster. Mm hmm. And the thing is, I don't know, you know, we talked about the Grens, and they're obviously they're a little bit more squishy than the, some of the late game infantry. But I don't know if that would have solved the problem when you have Matildas on the field, when you have the Reki already coming in. Um, yeah, but maybe the Panzer Grens would have done better, like on the sides or like just straight up against uh, the infantry sections. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the, the new ability, right? I mean, well, and especially as they gain some veterancy as well. Yeah, I think veterancy is like a big problem of this match, maybe for Bunker Buster as well. Just like the not doing those upgrades for like the three packs as well, like having them at veterancy one from the start. Well, that's kind of one of the key components of this game of Company of Heroes as a franchise is the focus on unit preservation and veterancy for increased performance. And you see that with all the veterancy accrued over Pi Eaters units that, like you said, has not translated so far to Bunker Busters. Yeah, and Pi Eater, I mean, let's see about his... He has, like, the, the infantry training and, like, the armored vehicle training. Yeah. Oh. Pack 40 knocked down to a sliver of health. It'll be decrewed. Matilda's eating away at that Grenadier squad. Oh, my goodness. When Matilda knocked out, the Grand Squad gets away with probably a fraction of a point of health. Now, Pie Eater has unlocked the Black Prince. But he has enough fuel. He just needs to not bleed any manpower. Now, P4 and Brumbear are going to push this Matilda. Six pounder in the rear makes this maybe a bad idea. Oh, I guess we're going to see a, a Churchill Black Prince here. Yeah, this game. that would be fun in a 1v1. Yeah. I mean, maybe now it's a little quiet. Maybe to point out, like, the new, um, the new, uh, what is the loop of a battle group as, like, the new bunker? This map has some pretty interesting spots to place it, because for the invisibility, you have, like, on the, like, on two sides of the map, you have, like, a, a little row, like, a little road behind a cover, like a hatch and... Mm -hmm. Things. If you place like an like that bunker there, you can, I think, pretty much cheese a bit on the enemy fuel. Both are behind the fear, the ten fuel from your enemy. So if you can place it there and like hide a unit in it mm -hmm. and just keep pressure on like those high resource points, I think that can be uh, pretty frustrating for your enemy. Yeah, almost certainly it was wasn't done because of the lack of manpower. Oh man, these Grens getting burned down by the foot guards. Another squad of Grens and Stoss Troop are going to walk up, so they'll eventually win that engagement. Black Prince has hit the field, though. Yeah, nice. Takes a while for it to be there, but... Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, foot guard is forced off by a big force from Bunker Buster here as he's going to recapture uh, the south side of the map and his fuel. But now this is a good army composition, right? The Vet 2 six pounder, the Matilda to kind of focus on infantry and soak up damage, and then the Black Prince to finish everything up. Now, yeah, I and think the so as well. And the Black, Pr the Black Prince is really tanky as well, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and he's got the triple packs, but the biggest problem is they're still very clumped up. And that makes them very susceptible to that recon artillery, as well as the gammon bombs from the foot guards. Yeah, he has enough for, he has enough for the recon artillery as well, so probably with this push, there it yep, is. Here it is, yep. The Stoss Trooper need to be careful. Oh, Ooh, they walked walk right back. into the gammon bomb. Oh, that's gonna be the Stoss, right? Yeah, be. Matilda's on him. There it, goes. there it is. Yeah. Another squad of Sauce Troop and deleted. Now, here's the pack wall, but all three shots bounce on the Matilda. And that's got to be frustrating for Bunker Buster. So, Pie Eater is about to get the VP advantage yet again. Well, yeah. packs get caught in the side of the uh, recon artillery. But it looks like they're going to move through. Uh, Matilda in front. Oh, they are still in the range. So the oh my goodness, that's that's tilting. Yeah, the one like the veteran, the two veterans, she was just in range. Yeah. Uh, so he had to move them. Yeah. But so Pie Eater doing a really good job on securing every time, securing with one side the other VP on the other side of the map on where the the big confrontation oh is. Oh my goodness, Black Prince deletes the Gren squad. Yeah, there goes the foot guard there as well. There goes the foot guards. I, I like that approach from the Grenzo because he forced the Matilda and the Black Prince to reface and then hit it with the uh, with the pack wall. Here comes the Luftwaffe loiter. Oh, it's targeting the wrong unit <laughs> yeah. because the Matilda was in the smoke. Now, that infantry section is very clumped up. And the. Oh, it's the Brum Bear refaces. All right, infantry section gone. Yeah, the packs are just not penetrating the tanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, two of the packs cleared. Another P4 and another Gren squad coming out. They knock out one of the pack 40s. Yeah, this feels like this is game, right? I mean, losing those packs here as well. You mean for Bunker Buster? Yeah, I think so. So he lost all three of his packs. Oh, yeah, and now he's Yeah, he just lost the yeah. Grand Squad. Yeah, I thought he he might have had what he needed to turn this around. Oh man, one more shot and that Matilda's gone. Oh. Instead, the Black Prince smokes the P4. Yeah. And that's it. You called it. Bloody good work. Nice. It was a really good match. All right. So getting into the build order here, starting with Bunker Buster. He starts with two Pioneers, gets his infantry company out, immediately goes into a two Gren and Sniper build. He techs up to his Panzer Grenadier company and then ends up getting a third Grenadier, which like we said in the cast, I think is a reaction to the potential pressure from the Humber on the Sniper. Then he techs his med station. He starts getting pack 40s out. He replaces a lost Grenadier squad. And he gets his Panzer company. And this is when he selects the Luftwaffe battle group. He starts with a Brumbear, gets a third pack 40. Then he gets some Stoss Troopin. He starts to replace Lost Pioneers, ending up with three squads on the field. Gets a Panzer IV, starts to replace Lost Grenadiers and Stoss Troopin as well. Um, backfills his Pack 40s. He ends up getting a second Panzer IV uh, to replace his losses before the game ends. Then looking at his battle group selections. So he starts off by unlocking the Falstrom Pioneers, the LG-40, uh, pretty much to get the manpower reserves. And then he tackles the left-hand side of the tree with the strafing run, eventually the uh, Falstrom Jaegers. And then finally unlocks the Stuka Loiter, which he loses a uses a couple of times during the game. All right. And so then for Pie Eater, uh, playing his UK heavy armor battle group, he starts with two sappers, picks his battle group right away, but doesn't really unlock anything from it. Gets his section command post straight into three infantry sections. Then his platoon command post, where he gets two Humbers, an AT gun, and his field infirmary. He ends up getting a fourth infantry section, which carries him uh, fairly late into the game until he starts to have some losses later. That's when he texts to tier four. Gets his first Matilda out, some foot guards. At this point, he does a, a fair amount of tech, so infantry training, grenades, and then eventually armored vehicle training. Gets his second Matilda, 
gets a second set of foot guards, and then the last unit he calls onto the field is, of course, the Black Prince. And then looking at his choices within the Heavy Armor Battle Group, he goes for Withdraw and Refit, uh, the Radio Net, and then Recon Artillery. And then he also unlocks Veteran Vehicle Crews, unlocks the Crusader, but doesn't build any. And then because he's got a couple of Matildas out, he elects for the Black Prince versus the Churchill production. All right, everyone. So back here with Fred. Uh, and so right after that game closed, he said, oh, I got some thoughts on Bunker Buster. So I'm just going to kick it right over to you, man. What do you got? Well, so pretty, pretty interesting to go like for four Grenadier squads. I think that was to counter, uh, probably to counter and maybe build up for like how what we said for like late game stalls so that you can like um, merge into them mm -hmm. and keep them alive. But while well, losing them, uh, losing too much infantry in the early to mid game uh, kind of held him back mm -hmm. for a, a while. And I think like the um, not doing with four grand squads, I I think like the infantry officer squatters, like the tech upgrade should have been um, uh, well, pretty interesting to get them like the extra veterancy, keeping them alive more, do, uh, giving them, yeah, well, uh, more veterancy. Yeah, and better it, matchup against the uh, the infantry sections, especially when the, when like, that's your go to. You know what I mean? Like, is it even late game? He lost a unit. He was building a grand squad. They come on the field with no veterancy. If he had invested in that officers' quarters early, right? Then yeah. then at least they come out vet one. Yeah, that's the same for the Panzer Grenadier officers or the quarters as well. Because like he, I think he built like five or six back guns mm -hmm. the whole game. Well. Getting them that veterancy, like the vet tree gives them like the extra armor penetration you you want against the Black Prince and all those Matildas. Mm -hmm. Like vet one gives them a little bit more health, and like vet two gives them, I guess, some extra accuracy. But like the vet tree is really important, and also maybe like the the ambush ability yeah. for them to get your opponent off guard. Yeah, yeah. At least you know because you get the initial kind of like alpha strike with the ambush ability. So at least your first first shot or so. Um, no, those are, those are all good points. I think the Stoss Troopin made sense to me until the Matilda started to hit the field. And then, you know, they get chunked down so quickly. If the foot guards actually close the distance, we saw that one gammon bomb. That was just unfortunate, uh, where they ended up like dodging, but then dodging back into it. Yeah, um, probably misclick. Yeah. Uh, it's gotta be frustrating on that end, but uh, yeah, it's only a four-man squad, so the AOE weapons are actually a really good counter uh, to the Stoss, um, and they're they're very expensive, very expensive to reinforce. Um, you know, so I like your point about m maybe getting a Panzer Grenadier squad, someone that'll trade a little bit more effectively, uh, but not bleed too much. It's it's kind of a tricky balance. Um, but yeah, I, I think so as well. Yeah, I, I think we but just kind of over. yeah, 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 with the new ability. Yeah, I think that that would have been maybe done more against uh, more against the infantry sections as well. Yeah. Or just having them like on the on the side. You saw Pie Eater doing it a lot as well, having like one foot guard section capping the side mm -hmm. and then going for a flank. Something like that could have uh, been really interesting for like the the Pentagrenadier squad as well, or even counter the the, the foot guard section. I don't know how they are doing in the one v one like. Uh, how they're going up against each other but well i think this is where you miss the mg42 right like in the early game uh all those deep infantry flanks trying to keep the sniper or you know hunt the sniper down and mg42 on that blob they basically they get suppressed and then pinned and have to retreat and now that big infantry force is off the field and it lets you get a little bit more map presence um, yeah, it, yeah. Good thing you say it because I haven't even like considered it. But he didn't build a single MG the whole game. Yeah. Like how we said in the early game, like what it like we were like, look at them uh, fighting blob versus blob. It was kind of they really moved their main infantry like uh, with three, three or four uh, uh, units at the same time. Like a machine gun would have done a lot of work. Yeah. And then the weird thing is with the with the grenadiers as a matchup for the infantry sections, like the infantry sections want to fight at range, and so do the grens, but the grens are not as good, especially once the infantry sections have been upgraded. So 
now yeah. you're now you're playing into their hands um the sniper is a good way to bleed the manpower but you don't have anything that can really like stop a big wave of brit infantry um short of short of vehicle short of the brum bear yeah i have to say though the sniper gameplay was really on par because i mean look at how much he got flanked and had to move around with the sniper so he couldn't yeah. really shoot yeah and then still getting like 24 kills before it uh, went down yeah no That's you're really nice you're that. absolutely spot on right so good micro of the sniper on bunker buster's part to keep it alive as long as he did and then also like really good sniper counterplay uh from pie eater just constantly forcing bunker buster to pay attention to every possible flank um, the sniper spent a lot of time kind of running and hiding and not engaging the enemy uh, and then was eventually, you know, deleted. But um, yeah, I think, you know, in Co 2, it was like one kill per minute is kind of, you know, hey, that's good sniper play. Um, I think in Co 3, snipers are a little bit harder to use effectively. So, you know, 24 kills in 22 minutes, uh, pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, it was pretty solid, especially with the new TTK update as well, because if you forget about it it's going down pretty fast now especially to the brand upgraded sections yeah you saw that he got like one burst oh one yeah. was half hp yeah wow. uh the only other thing for bunker buster and this is a little nitpicky um i understand the pack wall but i think when it's it's most effective when the at guns are kept spread out Right. Yeah. So when they're all kind of clumped up on each other, it makes them really vulnerable to that recon already, which was used over and over and over again. Uh, makes them vulnerable to the game and bomb from the the foot guards, and even to some extent, from you know, to the Matildas. They get a couple shots in with the AOE. Uh, they do a lot of damage to the pack forties. Where I've seen the pack wall is really hard to deal with is when they are kind of spaced out and they form this like much larger engagement area, so that. As you move in, like let's like, say you take a Matilda and engage one, you expose your side and rear armor to the other one or two uh, packs, and then suddenly you really can't approach. Like you move your vehicle forward, you immediately take fire from a couple AT guns. It's from different directions, and there's not a clean counter. It's much harder to micro that way, but I think if you had seen like basically the AT guns set up in lanes, right, one on either side of the main square there, with a third somewhere on the flank or in the center. Uh, yeah. then maybe that first Matilda goes down a little sooner or it constantly spends time off the field and then it doesn't have the impact that it has. And it's it's harder for the recce uh, artillery to also uh, clear them because now they were so clumped <clears throat> up. So yeah. one barrage had to pressure like three uh, packs. And yeah. like one more thing was like, uh, I can understand that you had like maybe one pack against the humber even though like you saw like having a good good mind placement which bunker buster had in the, like the early game like did 200 damage to like the humber but mm -hmm. having two against them uh, so early you saw that because they were like sitting in base for like five minutes yeah if you could have spent those manpower for like the the pentagrenadiers yeah i guess that could have been uh could have gotten you more of an advantage yeah it's one of those if they get the kill then no harm no foul right but yeah. if if you don't actually finish anything off then yeah the efficiency of that manpower is kind of wasted yes all right so so thoughts on pie eater and his brit play well uh he was really quick in deciding that he doesn't need it, the humbers anymore after mm -hmm. seeing like i guess maybe you saw the second pack mm -hmm. but when he hit the mine with the first humber he kind of instantly went back with it and like uh, refitted it mm -hmm. so he could go for the matildas i guess that was that um gave him the ma uh, the, the fuel to get the matilda in there and uh, start pressuring bun bunker buster yeah because if he lost like one or two humbers there the game would have been different, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the withdraw and refit ability. I Like, I understand with the heavy armor battle group, like, it gets it, uh, and it gets it early. But, like, mm -hmm. the fact that it's a full refund for those vehicles just seems kind of, like, cheesy to me. Especially when, uh, for the DAC in the US who have the wreckers, right? You go and repair yeah. repairing a wreck is also not free. It costs uh I think it's like half of the vehicles, like manpower and fuel. 
for a third and then the vehicle is still a piece of garbage for the first 30 seconds until you repair it so like the fact that the brits can just get all their resources back still kind of blows my mind um yeah maybe for indeed what you say maybe for the the armor battle group something mm-hmm. to say about but like for the tier four one it's different i guess i mean i maybe know they- talking to garrett like he's like yeah my matilda took too much damage so i just refit it and built a new one rather than waste yeah. the time repairing it which is yeah, insane it's, and it's it's quicker as well yeah sometimes it's it's maybe quicker to indeed like <laughs> yeah just send it off the map than uh and building a new one yeah i did like the the pairing of the matildas then with the black prince uh i thought yeah. Hyder ended up with a really good army composition there um i thought he used the four infantry sections to great effect um and especially once he started getting them veterancy and weapon upgrades they were they were doing a lot of work uh until they started to kind of take some casualties from the from the brum bear from the p4 um, yeah same for going for the foot guard as well really well played with the foot guards keeping them on the sides just uh, capping the sides and then going for a flank like how he got like the sniper as well yeah with the foot guard yeah because it's the same what you see uh, most of the time with like ranger play as well uh, on the sides because like there are not really uh, a lot of units which can deal with them one on one, so you have to send more than just one unit. It's mm-hmm. the same for the Guastatori as well. So that was really well played. Also, like I, every time there was I like an to double down on, on the that. Tops. That's a Sorry. really good. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Like especially with the upgraded TTK, the Ranger Blob right up the middle. You know, same with Guastatori and Foot Guards. It doesn't hit as hard anymore. But you're a hundred percent right. You keep those units on the flank where they'll win a one-on-one and then if they get to sneak in and then usually they have enough hp that they can take a difficult retreat path and usually not worry about being wiped but man yeah you get a good flank in you knock out an at gun you knock out a vehicle you knock out a sniper 100 percent worth it yeah yeah and you have to be constantly uh thinking about where it's gonna pop up and that's kind of what they want with uh with the ttk upgrade mm-hmm. right they mm-hmm. want to be want you to pop out of like from the side and just uh, surprise your enemy with a really strong unit in close quarter. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also I'm... like Go ahead. really, really well played where he kind of when he was fighting on the top side of the map, like there was always one unit capping on the bot side, mm-hmm. keeping the constant pressure of the, the resource pressure. Yeah. No, he did a great job of that, right? Despite the fact that it felt like he was on the back foot from an army comp perspective until even like the very end of the game he, the fact that he was able to keep such heavy vp pressure on for such a long time um i think it forced bunker buster into engagements that like if the vp numbers were flipped he wouldn't have taken um, yeah this lo- like you said this last engagement was really coin flippy yeah yep i so, think it was the the death of the p4 that finally sealed it there um, yeah and losing the three packs and also what you saw was like the, the wrong, one loiter going in and then the other loiter was ca- getting called by the Luftwaffe and like the Matilda doing his smoke and mm-hmm. just not getting targeted by the loiter kind of kept it alive for uh, Pai to, to repair it just a little bit so it could go into the engagement again and yeah, well, just help uh, finalize this match. Yeah, well, and the Brit heavy tanks are a lot more resistant to the axis loiters than the u.s vehicles are i think right because like an easy eight if it's solo targeted by either uh axis loader it'll get burned down but like the black prince like kind of just like shrugged off the constant strafing runs the matilda took some damage but like they had time to like clear the area and not get knocked out uh so i think you know if if bunker buster chose luftwaffe purely for that loiter uh that probably wasn't worth it in the long run no, I, I I I don't think he got like the value out of it. Uh, I I think like Paita got way more value about uh, out of his recon artillery. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, well, Fred. Hey, thanks, man. I know you just got got back from vacation, but thanks for sitting down with me. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a really lot of fun. It was a really good game. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, I think the players did really well. Yeah, so. both these guys are awesome, and I, I love when they finally took the gloves off and like let each other have it. it. Made a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean the last the last pushes were really something. Just a lot of things happening, so yeah. it was really cool. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us here. 
Uh, see y'all in the next one.